What's going on YouTube? Chris is crossing wires. And I'm actually crossing a couple wires this evening. Okay. So, I was fortunate enough that uh, I found a few people that are already trusting me to send send me some of that stuff that wasn't working. And um, somebody sent me a battery pack, 48 volt battery pack. And, uh, okay, what I'm using to uh, test this battery right now, you, you can use a lot of different things. You can use the multimeter. Anything that you can test voltage with or get, you know, see if there's voltage somewhere. So right now, I'm using a Logic Probe. Old fashioned uh, logic probe. I dropped it on the floor with a ground clip on it. Normally, this logic probe had a ground clip and a positive clip because it is a logic probe, meaning it just doesn't work off a of ground and uh, 12 volts at the tip, like most uh, test lights. A test light just uses a ground and test for 12 volts there however test lights can short car systems out so a logic probe has a circuit board built in and uh one goes on ground the other one normally goes on positive and that would keep you from grounding out a system like if you were tracing wires in an automobile whereas though you're actually testing wires that go to the uh, CPU and you don't want to ground out wires in the CPU so you would use a logic probe as as opposed to a test light now on a battery like this you could actually use a regular test light but uh, I'm not using a test light anyway being as though it has this big old clip on it what I'm going to do is uh, clip it to this little small wire that I have with a little teeny alligator clip on it because this alligator clip is way too big to clip it on parts of this battery I'm trying to clip it to so initially I just wanted to test this battery the guy said uh, it's not getting any voltage and he tested it with a test light and uh, I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to put my alligator clip on ground and then I'm going to stick my probe there and as you can see no light, no power, okay? Now, I've already started on this thing, on this battery. And then after I started on it, I was like, oh, I forgot to film it. So anyway, first thing I did was cut off the cover. Uh, because uh, on one of these sealed batteries, you know, it had, it had uh, one of these plastic coverings on it. And I mean... Unfortunately, to work on a battery, you got to cut the cover off. It's, it's not no screws that hold the cover on or anything, so it has to be cut off. And once you cut the cover off, it has like the, these plastic, uh, plastic uh, sidings on there that give it its form and its rigidity before they put that covering on it. Anyway, I cut that off and... First thing I did was test like I'm doing now. Test to see if there's any voltage coming through there. And there is none. So, I want to show you guys how to test these batteries. And how to trace it down and see where the problem is. Okay, we're not getting any power at the connector. Alright? So, the first thing I would do in a situation like this is I'm going to find the main ground on this battery. And the main ground on this battery is right underneath this piece of tape right here. Uh, and you can see there's a heavy gauge black wire going to it. And the main ground is pretty much going to be at the end of a battery. You know, the, the uh, if you're ever looking for the positive, the main positive, or the main ground, it's going to be at the end of the battery. Eat one of the ends, that's for sure. All right, so the main ground on this battery is at this end. That's it right there under that piece of tape. So uh, I took my little scissors and cut that piece of tape. And uh, what I did then 
is I put my alligator clip on that main ground. Now, if you know anything about a BMS, when you install a BMS, BMS is worked by testing voltage at each stage of a battery after each cell. So let's just say, uh, let me make this simple. And these aren't going to be the correct voltages, but I just want you to understand how it works. Let's say you got a 12 volt battery. And in order to make that 12 volt battery, you have 12 cells all in series. And let's just say those cells are only one volt a piece. Now everybody knows 18650s aren't one volt a piece. They're 3.7 volts nominal, fully charged, they're 4.2. But anyway, let's just say you had a battery, 12 volts, each cell was one volt. Now on a BMS, a, a way a BMS works is a BMS has multiple wires that each one of these wires you see here that's coming off of the BMS. This is the BMS in this battery. If you don't know what a BMS is, the BMS is going to be like a little circuit board. And it's going to have one plug on it. It's going to have a whole bunch of little white wires. And each one of those little white wires goes to each cell positive. Okay? So, like I said, let's say, for instance, we got a 12-volt battery. After one volt, there's going to be a wire from the BMS. After two volts, there's going to be a wire from the VS. Three volts, and so on, and so on. Okay? So if you want to test a battery, you're going to start from the beginning. And the beginning is going to be clipping your ground to the main ground. And then we're going to put our probe on each one of these little BMS wires to see if there's voltage there. Okay, as you can see, on, on the first one, I'm just sticking this probe right on through the tape. And you see we're getting voltage there. So that's good. Alright. I'm going to do it the next one. We're getting voltage there. That's good too. And what that means. I mean. Immediately. That's telling you that this battery is definitely not completely dead. Now when we tested that the connector. We ain't getting no volts at all. But at least we know there are some cells that are good because we're getting some volt, some, uh, you know, signal. So, initially, what I did was I went through each and every point. Okay, I'm back. Unfortunately, I'm filming with my Note 20. And unfortunately, when you're filming with your phone and somebody text messages you or calls you, it cuts off the damn camera. Ugh! That, ugh! Anyway, sorry about that, guys. But yes. Okay, so I think I was saying we want to test for voltage at each connection point where the BMS connects. And I went through all of them. And I had power at all of them. Okay? So, there's no problem there. All the cells are good. That tells me all these cells are perfectly fine. Alright? So, what that means is we're going to go to the BMS. Because that is where this power lead goes and connects to the BMS. So that means there's a problem with the BMS. I mean, if you haven't figured that out already. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect, once again, I'm going to connect uh, my alligator clip. Now, this ground, this main ground, you can actually follow it with your eyes all the way up. And it connects to the BMS right there right there now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my alligator clip right there where it connects at the top of the BMS 
and test again to see if there's a break in this in this wire somewhere in this that'll tell me if it's a break in this ground wire or if it you know for some reason there was a surge and it burnt it and it's open okay so testing for uh 12 volts again at the plug still no voltage there okay so uh Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. Yeah, that came off. Alright, let's check. Let me check uh Alright, still getting still getting vote that voltage at each spot where the BMS is positive wires are connected. We're still getting voltage there. Okay, and we're still getting voltage right here. Now we're getting voltage here at the plug. But that's with that's with our ground connected right here. Okay? We're getting voltage at the plug, at the connector, and our ground is connected right there. I just said that. <laughs> Alright, now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna trace down the wires on this connector and see where they go to the board now we know for a fact we know for a fact that the positive wire is getting voltage because I, that's where I have the probe connected at the end so what we're going to do is look for where the grounds are connected on the BMS now if you notice if we're looking at the BMS I don't know if you can see let me see if I can zoom but there's another ground wire right there, and that's actually the ground wire to the connector. See? That's the actual ground wire that goes to the connector. So we're going to put our alligator clip right there, and I'm pretty sure when we test it, we're not going to be getting anything, which we're not. So... That means that we have a bad BMS. I mean, there's a problem with the BMS. The ground is good right there, but somewhere on this circuit board, there's, there's an opening that's not making connection to where, this co where the ground is on this connector. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect this. I'm going to pull this BMS off. Where's my little scissors? Ooh, darn. Let me just use some cutters. Yeah, I'm gonna have to cut all this, all this wire, all this tape off. I should have some scissors doing this. So we can see what's going on here. This is some strong tape, boy. I guess that's why they use it. Alrighty. Okay, well, anyway, what I see here, now this, this, uh, this battery has two connectors. So, I'm sure, normally in this case, when it has two connectors, one connects to the controller, this other power connector probably goes to, uh, maybe some lights or something else that needs, uh, the battery VCC type main voltage. Okay, or it could be, this could be where the charger connects, I'm not sure. 
because I don't know what the bike or scooter or whatever this battery came out of. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know where, where these connect. But I know they should bo both have uh, 48 volts because that's what this battery is supposed to be. Now, when I disconnect this BMS and flip it over, I was looking to see if there was any burnt traces or a trace was broken or something. And when I flip it over, I mean, the board, the circuit board looks pretty fine. I don't see like a burnt trace or anything like that stopping the ground. Now, you can see on the bottom side of this BMS, you can see where the ground goes from the connector. It's soldered right there. And it's another ground for this other connector is right there. And matter of fact, let me test the voltage on this other connector. See what's going on with it. Now, I'm going to put... Uh, our ground back on the main ground that I know is good. Not going to use the grounds on the BMS because they're not working. So uh, actually this one goes to the main ground so I can use that. Now let's see what's going on with this connector here. It came off again. Mm, sorry about that. Raggedy connections here fellas. Oh, that's the same one. Sorry. Okay. Now notice. Let me zoom back out. Now, this is the other connector. Like I said, it had two connectors. This connector obviously was running something else. Now, when I check for voltage on this connector, look how dull that light is. Let me show you the difference. See how bright that is? That's getting the main 48 volts. This one over here, it's getting voltage. But it obviously ain't nowhere near 48 volts. It's very dim. So, that means that, uh, like I said, this, this BMS, this circuit board has a whole lot of problems. So, in this case, you will want to replace this BMS. Because this BMS has a whole bunch of little diodes, little chips on there, and everything. One of those little parts is bad, and uh, we're not going to deep dive into testing all of those little components. Because uh, that would be a headache, and not only that, I don't even have replacement parts for any of those little diodes. So, what I'm going to do is uh i'm gonna see if i can go ahead and uh find another bms i have laying around somewhere and uh wire it up to this i'm sure i may have one laying around but anyway basically we just diagnosed this battery pack and determined that this bms the little circuit board was bad now, like I said, if I was stocked up as far as having all these little diodes and these little capacitors and all that little stuff, I would continue troubleshooting all the way down till I found the component that was bad. Or it could be one of these MOSFETs on the top. Most likely it may be one of those two because underneath of this heat sink, if you notice, they have a, a little piece of aluminum right here. And this aluminum is a heat sink, basically, because they have some transistors on the top of this BMS. And uh, the little grounding terminal on the top of the transistor goes to this aluminum so it can dissipate the heat. Otherwise, they would burn up instantly. Those transistors get really hot. So, most likely, it's a bad transistor or a bad chip bad MOSFET, whatever the case may be, we're not going to repair this BMS. We're just going to replace it. So, like I said, I'm sure I, I have a BMS laying around here somewhere. If I don't, I'll just have to order BMS and replace, and you know, order order a, a 48 volt BMS. And, uh, which you would do when you get the new BMS. Hopefully, uh, it would have the same plug on it and you just would plug that right up and uh 
make all your solder connections, solder your power wires back onto it, and uh, it should work. Uh, but anyway, that's that. I just wanted to show you how to troubleshoot a battery. And um, we determined that there's nothing wrong with these cells. There's nothing wrong with the actual battery itself. Um, you could very easily, you could very easily just unsolder the ground from the BMS and solder it to where that main ground is. And guess what? This battery will work all day long. It will work fine. The thing is, the BMS is what protects your battery from overcharging and protects uh, protects the battery from you drawing too much current off of it with your e-bike or scooter or whatever the hell this goes to. I don't know what it goes to. But like I said, the BMS protects you from that. Now, me, myself, if it were me, because I know what I'm doing, I would just bypass this BMS until I got one. I mean, I, I'm not saying I wouldn't replace it, but until I got a new BMS, I'd bypass the BMS by just moving this ground. All you would have to do is move this ground to where the ground is on your connector. And bam, you would have your 48 volts back and you'd be up and running. And I would run, I would run my scooter or my bike like that until my BMS came. But this doesn't belong to me, so I'm going to make sure it's done the right way. I'm going to make sure there's a BMS and this battery is safe for the guy who owns it. Because, uh... As I told you in another one of these videos, these batteries will burn your house down if you don't know what you're doing. Now, if he has a 48-volt charger, which we know uh, a 48-volt battery is fully charged at 52 volts. If he's got a 48-volt charger that only goes up to 52 volts, I mean, he's pretty much safe as far as charging it. The charger can only go up to 52 volts. So that's it. It's not going to overcharge it. However, uh, at the same time, depending on whatever this battery was running. I don't expect that this battery was running a high power EV. Because it's a small battery. Meaning, uh, whatever the EV was, it's not going to draw too much current. If, if your batteries don't go into thermal runaway because you overcharge them, they go into thermal runaway because you pull too much current off of them. I mean, like if he had a high power 10KW, you know, e-bike, and you hooked this battery up and it was drawing 200 amps through these batteries and there wasn't no BMS to shut it down when it went over, you know, went over the amps maximum amps that these batteries can deliver these batteries are going to get hot and they're going to go in thermal runaway and the ev is going to catch on fire if you've seen one of those videos where a guy's bike is burning caught on fire that's because uh his batteries for whatever reason he might have got a short you know these things are easy to short out to uh something might have punctured it or uh, something might have shorted out his his uh, power wires. I don't know. But something caused those batteries to overheat and go on thermal runaway. And once they do that, they're like a pack of firecrackers. And you're going to have a bad day. Anyway, fellas, that's it. That's the end of this video. I will catch you guys later. Uh, hopefully I can find a BMS and I can come back and show you this battery working properly with a BMS. But uh, if not, until then, you at least know how to troubleshoot your battery. Alright, take it easy, take care, deuces. Okay, good news guys. After further investigation, after removing the heat sink from off the BMS and I was able to look at it, these uh, transistors are... Uh, are bad so we're not going to replace them although we could but it's easy enough just to get just to replace this BMS now guess what I found the same BMS look at it on Amazon 15 bucks let me show you uh. 
There it is right there. 48 volt BMS. 15 bucks. Alright, so I'm going to order one of those for my guy, and I'll, that'll come, and I'll stick that in there, and that battery will be back good as new. Deuces. <laughs> Deuces.